Welcome back, friends. It's your boy, Chris. We're here to talk about NFTs this week, a subject that's near and dear to my heart. I find it fascinating. I hope you do, too. Let's jump into it. So I've been seeing a lot of things online. A lot of people either love or they hate NFTs. And I think a lot of people associate NFTs with pump and dump schemes on you know, coins, where an influencer will pump up the idea of some type of cryptocurrency, make it sound sensational, everybody will buy it, and they will dump their interest, make a ton of money in the process, and walk away from it. I think that people don't understand how broad NFTs can be. So what I'm hoping to do this week is break down a little bit of the concepts in a very, 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 very simple way to help get people an understanding of how valuable they could be in the future and why people misunderstand NFTs. So when you think about what an NFT is, a non-fungible token, you think a bored ape. The Adidas collaboration that's about to come out or the Nike one where they just bought an NFT you know, company. People have a tendency to think about NFTs in the context of just an image, just a JPEG, or just maybe even a rolling video. And that doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of how valuable this technology is. So by way of backstory, let's get into what the blockchain is. The blockchain at its most basic form is a decentralized network of computers with a general ledger on them. And for those of you who are very technical, don't call me out on this. I understand that I'm watering down something. The idea is to help the masses, not help the technical experts. You've got your own fan bases on Reddit and everywhere else and Discord. This ain't for you. So effectively what that means for you, the average, average person, is, is this general ledger, this record of who owns things, is on lots of computers all over the world. And those computers all have a general ledger that all lines up. And if somebody's general ledger or somebody's list of ownership doesn't line up with another computer's, you know that that person has a fabricated transaction because the blockchain is updated effectively all at the same time. So if I buy something from you, I'm shown as the seller and you are shown as the buyer via whatever your handle is or your wallet ID is. And that's what Web3 wallets are right now. One of the big pushes that's out there is people can buy a Web3 URL for something like Ethereum. So for example, I own my name, chrisnahibi.eth.eth. You can send me anything you want in Ethereum if you'd like. Send me something for free, it's nice. But that is effectively your wallet information. If you have a wallet from something like a Coinbase wallet, it's this long, complicated number. But that's who bought an NFT. So those registrars, those lists of information, those buyers and sellers are gonna match up all over the world. You've now decentralized the concept of ownership. So there's so many things that we deal with on a daily basis that have ownership related to it. You want to register your car, you go to your local DMV. You want to register your home, you actually change title with a title company. These are just forms of identifying the proper seller and the proper buyer and showing them on a record, a ledger. But those ledgers are kept independent of everything else. So your car is kept at the DMV, your, your title companies keep a register of who owns property, and so on and so forth for all the things you could possibly think of. So I want people to start thinking about NFTs in the context of real world items, not these digital items. While it's cool and it's hip, and that's kind of sensational right now, the real applicability of NFTs is when you tokenize. You take something that's real world and you make an NFT that's associated with it. And I'm going to give you a couple examples of how that can be super helpful to society. Let's say your friend John wants to sell you a Louis Vuitton wallet but you don't know if it's a real wallet or a fake wallet. If it was tokenized when it was sold by Louis Vuitton to John and John sells it to you, you can actually trace that record back on the blockchain and say, it was created by Louis Vuitton here, it was sold to John, and John is now selling it to me. You have a way of validating that that document, that asset, and that NFT, which combined together with a serial number, is in fact authentic. And John can't sell 6,000 of them with the same serial number because then there's 6,000 trade lines in the blockchain. You know if there's one of those items in one seller, it is more than likely real. There's no way to do that right now. Now, it's not going to stop the counterfeit business. John can sell 6,000 other wallets to other people with the same serial number, but you would know that you bought it from him when he still had ownership and you'd be the first person in the blockchain. A very similar concept in title known as either race or notice. The first person in a race jurisdiction to record title owns it, 
And the first person in a notice jurisdiction to have notice that somebody else bought something is the first person to own it. Now, that complicated uh, structure and nuance aside, this can also be applied to title on real estate. You can do away with race and notice and all these concepts. If you wanted to buy a house, in theory, the owner could be registered to a blockchain. Every piece of property, every parcel number could be tokenized and associated with an NFT. And if you bought a house from somebody, you would effectively be buying the house vis-a-vis -vis your ownership in the NFT. Now, there's lots of roadblocks to making that happen. And one of the things is the DeFi smart contracts, which will absolutely help to do this. So it's basically an algorithmic way of saying, if this is sold and converts to this person and the money comes this way and the property goes that way, the NFT changes title. It's just a smart algorithmic way for consumers to buy something and have it automatically done in the blockchain and in this web-based world that we all hear of. So the applicability of things like non-fungible tokens is really not images. It's cool right now. It's hip. It's definitely sensational. But when you start taking real world items, tokenizing them and selling them in the real world, much less what could be happening in the metaverse at some point in time. Like for example, if you bought a Louis Vuitton purse in real life and you got a metaverse tokenized version of it for your avatar to wear, that would be kind of cool too. But for the way we live life, the most applicable revolutionary technology is gonna be changing the way we buy and sell things in life. Think about every department store you could ever go to. It's gonna wind up being a situation where you could literally buy it on the secondary market and you know it's real. But for artists, it's even more revolutionary. If you're an artist, think about the days of Napster. Think about the days of people trading stuff online that were sharing or file sharing, movies and everything else. If movies were tokenized and, and sold via an NFT, every single person who made that movie who's supposed to get a portion of that payment could get their residual directly from each transaction from the blockchain. There's no more of this need to have a centralized repository of information and dispersing it amongst movie theaters. And while we all like going to the movie theaters and it's all well and good, imagine being able to buy a movie the day it comes out and the theater gets paid, the actor gets paid their residuals, and everybody else along the way who would normally wait for a studio house to sell it to them gets paid. What if you're a musician and you put out a record and you've got a wonderful soundtrack of, of, of audio that people love listening to and it's amazing, but they were stealing it in the past. They were just downloading it, giving it to their friends and sharing it. Well, NFTs could essentially find a way to pay that artist for every single stream, every single download. The applicability of these things that we think about in this funny way where we're changing an avatar on your Instagram or you're making yourself seem cool because you've got a collection of pictures, this is the tip of the iceberg. Don't get lost in the sensationalism that's out there right now. Look at ways around you that life will be changing. And if you want a quick business tip, you want me to put you on some free game, get into technology that's going to change the way we deal with real life things now. Buy those Web3 URLs. Buy that stuff because it's going to be selling. Budweiser just bought beer.eth.eth because it was valuable enough to them to have a way to be paid that in the future. It's cool, it's hip now, but it might be very, very big money later on. That is the future of how so many industries will change, and it's the core technology behind it. If you can find a way to get into these businesses early enough, you might become a tomorrow's millionaire. Hopefully this helps somebody with the core concepts, the basics. Again, this is not a technical breakdown. If you want that, there are other videos that we can point you to that are better than this. There's definitely a lot of places out there you can Google and find out more research. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.